Hey homies, how's it going? Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. So check it out, Vatos y Vatas. I'm gonna have my special guest to help us out with this movie again, you know. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, without further ado, here he is, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you guys here in a second, alright? Thank you, Dirtbag. So welcome back, mates. How y'all doing? So obviously we're doing another Mad Max movie today. But uh, real quick, I'm gonna play you guys the trailer and then we'll get back and I'll tell you all about the movie. All right. I'll see y'all in a bit. Enjoy the trailer and then we'll talk about the movie. The world had been through a trial by fire and only the greatest warriors and their deadliest enemies emerged from the flames. Who are you? Nobody. I'm still. I can feel it. The dice are rolling. <laughs> he was the one they called mad. But he's just a raggedy man. But to those whose lives hung in the balance. Where's the whiting ones? Whiting for what? Whiting for you. He was the one they called hero. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Dying times here. Now, Mad Max is back in Beyond Thunderdome. Gibson, Tina Turner, Mad Max, Beyond Thunderdome. So, as you all can tell, we're talking about Mad Max, Beyond Thunderdome. It came out in 1985. This is directed by George Miller. Stars Mel Gibson. It's Mad Max. Bruce Spence as Jedediah. Tina Turner as Anti Entity. And Frank Thring as The Collector along with some uh, various other people. This is a very large cast, actually. So, we uh, catch up with Max, um, I think it's 20 years after the events of The Road Warrior. And uh, he's, uh, he's running a team of uh, camels pulling his car when uh, a uh, plane knocks him off his... Uh, his uh, ride, and uh, they take off and steal his car. Luckily, his monkey is able to toss out a few things he might need so he can uh, survive. So he keeps on walking till he gets to this place uh, called Barter Town. Now in Barter Town, they are trying to uh, reestablish some form of, um, what would you say, um, economy of uh, you know civilization there we go uh, although they, they have a police force and no weapons are allowed within the uh, town you know and this is where uh, they meet uh, Max and they uh, think that he might have what it takes to uh, Change, uh, shake up the uh, status quo as far as leadership is concerned because you see you got Auntie Entity who runs the top side of Bard Town but she had to team up with this uh, set of people called Master Blaster Master is the brains, Blaster is the, is the muscle they're the ones that actually run the engineering and keep power going in Bard Town you know because uh, they're basically running this town from an old uh, engine that's running off of methane, which they know how to produce. You know, the only person that knows how to keep this running is the master. So, Max wants his car back. Auntie Entity wants full control of, of uh, Bada Town. So they enlist Max and tell him, hey, we'll get you your car. And all the supplies you want, you know. Same thing, he's always having to cut a deal, you know, to get around. 
And uh, so he's got a challenge, massive blasts to uh, Thunderdome, you know. So they go through Thunderdome, you know, Max is uh, getting his, uh, his, <laughs> his uh, rear handed to him. And uh, he finally gets the upper hand, realizes that uh, this isn't really what he wants to do. But uh, his hand has already been forced. Uh, he's exiled. And then this is where the movie takes kind of a turn, you know. And actually, a really fun story about this. This movie was not actually intended to actually be a Mad Max movie. It was going to be um, a uh, modern retelling of uh, The Lord of the Flies. This is where you get the, the children that find Max in the desert. You know... And uh, Max is there, and they think he's somebody else. Uh, these are these children are survivors of a plane crash, you know. So they think that this is uh, the captain from that plane coming back to save them and fly him off to, uh, you know, to modern civilization that no longer exists, you know, because when these children left behind, they were, you know, little babies, you know. So they don't understand that the world that they live in now is after all the finding amenities have pretty much gone, you know? So Max decides to, to let him know, you know, it's like, it ain't gonna happen, you know? The only thing that you're gonna find out in the desert is uh, pain, suffering, and border town, you know? But uh, instead of, of the, of these little children peoples, says they ain't gonna listen. And they take off. So Max always is a reluctant hero, has to go out after them. And uh it's where we get the rest of the movie, which I do not wish to spoil for you. I don't want to run through the whole thing. Um I do want to talk about some uh technical aspects of the movie and uh things of that nature. So um one of the cool things is uh Mel Gibson was only twenty nine years old when uh when this movie was filmed, but uh He's, his character will be 40, I think 45 or something around there. Yeah, so, you know, um, like I said, it's supposed to be 20 years after uh, the uh, events of Mad Max 2. Um, that uh, dress that Tina Turner wears is actually made out of <laughs> chain mail. It's very heavy uh, for her to be able to move as much as she could in that was very uh, awe-inspiring. Um, and, uh, that hair that she has going on, that's actually a wig. They had to have her shave her head for the, for the movie. That's why that widow peaks so incredibly high. Um, let's see here. The, the, the hero song from the movie is actually charted. Um, there's other interesting things. Uh, the... The character Anti Entity was originally written for Tina Turner, but they didn't really think that she would actually take it. But they were surprised when she did. You know, um, a lot of people don't consider this to be a very good Mad Max movie because it's more um, dialogue driven as opposed to you know action. You know, uh, there there is action in this movie. It's just not uh, to the same level or intensity as the other Mad Max movies. You know. So, uh, but, uh, I, they say it's a lot to do with, uh, George Miller because one of his good mites, uh, passed during the making of this movie. So anyway, in my opinion, it's still a really great Mad Max movie. It's still, uh, the story of a reluctant hero and, you know, his hero's journey as it were. And the fact that, uh, he can never be a part of the thing that he saves. He's always a man apart, you know, a world apart. So that's uh, that's my spiel for you guys about the uh, movie. Uh, thanks, Dirtbag. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and uh, do these Mad Max uh, movie reviews with you. And uh, I'll see you for the next one. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, good day. <laughs> and throw another shrimp on the bobby. Hey, thanks, good Ken. It's always that good to have you around here too, homies. 
I appreciate you flying up from Australia every week to come say what's up to us, man. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that movie. You know, like I said, I really like all the Mad Max movies. Um, like uh, Ken said, uh, this one, like, obviously isn't the most action-packed uh, in a certain way. It's more uh, intellectual, cerebral, kind of, you know, like, thriller-esque, you know. But it's still, it's a, I think it's a good painting of, like, showing you, like, you know, eventually out of disorder there will always become order you know and that's what they're trying to do with um buttertown and even in the end you know when they lose their uh their engineer they still decide that they're going to try to rebuild you know they and they don't take revenge on uh on our boy max you know and i think that's the thing that's most perplexing to max you know because he, he always seems like he's like ready to go you know but He's not gonna take himself out. He's waiting for somebody else to do it for him, but nobody ever will, you know? So, I don't know, it's a really weird survival thing, you know? Like, he fights, but at the same time, it's like, when he's done, he's done, but you know, he ain't never done. So anyway, real quick, before uh, before I uh, let you guys go, I wanted to point out this new piece of uh, decor right here. Uh, it's Blackened Art, uh, Blackened Heart, art studio i believe they're on uh instagram um and they'll ship to you anywhere you know and they make these really cool things uh he's made me uh this i guess you could call it a shadow box it's got a piston in here that's uh like all done up it's pretty cool and then uh this piece right here also i got from them there is um it is black and dark black and dark I also got a, a record that they painted up for me and I got a surfboard, but I don't really want to pull it down and show you guys. Sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of these days we'll catch it in another video. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I appreciate you guys for uh, checking out my channels. Um, you know, thanks for letting uh, good Kent come over and talk to you guys too. You know what I mean? And also, if you guys are going to write out for the Tucson uh, Tombstone thing, remember, it's the 27th, 28th, and 29th of August 2021. 2021. All right? So anyway, thank you for tuning in, folks. I really appreciate you guys. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And share, because sharing is caring, homies. You know, let's, uh, let's, let's get a lot of people in here, homes. You know, the more the merrier. So anyway... Thank you for tuning in, y'all, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side, all right? Feed my homes.